On this game take, you'll rescue Gotham City as Batman. Use stealth and skill in Ninja Gaiden 2. Bring out the big guns with heavy barrel. Stake your claim as Dragon Warrior 2. This game player strategy tape is full of hints, tips, and playing strategies. To get the most from this tape, we suggest you first read the manual that comes with the cartridge and also have some experience playing the game. Good luck from the editors and game players at Game Players Magazines. Gotham City is counting on Batman to stop the Joker from ruining the city with his DDID nerve gas. As Batman, you must travel through different parts of Gotham City to seek out and destroy the Joker and put a stop to his evil plans. Along the way, you'll find bonus items that will restore your energy, raise your score, and increase your firepower. You can get to the top of Stage 1-2 in one of two ways. Climbing up the walls on the left is easier, but if you go up the platforms, you can find bonus items and extra weapons. At the top of this level, there's a flying gunman who will give you a run for your money. Duck behind a small column and lash out with a batarang. At the end of stage one, you'll meet Flying Man, who has been hired by the Joker to assassinate Batman. Stay in the lower left corner and dodge his shots. When he flies down to attack, blast him with a gun. Have your gun ready when you're near this ninja. When he's at the far right on the screen, drop down and fire. In stage 2-1, green waste liquid runs below the platform. If you fall in, jumping might not get you on a platform. Try grabbing the side of a platform and jumping to the next one. This enemy has an extending claw that makes any close encounter impossible. The Batarang should take care of this problem. This climb is a difficult one. Watch how Batman plans each jump to try to avoid touching the electrical current. If you're careful, you can leave this area without losing much energy. Be ready for the robots, too. This missile launcher can be dangerous, but it can be helpful, too. Once you're safe, position yourself near where the missiles will land. Those you destroy will turn into helpful items. When you jump from this ledge, you should have the right directional held down. This keeps the conveyor belt from pulling you into the spikes. Timing and planning can get you through this tough area. Jump to the side of the platform onto the wall, then face to face with the armed guard. Once you've taken care of him, fall directly in the middle of the hole to avoid the spikes. The machine intelligence system is in three parts. Destroy the cannon first with your gun. Jump to escape its fire. Next, stand by the electric pillar to destroy the electric current controller. Now you can just punch the core while ducking to dodge its blasts. Don't stick around to dance with these creeps. Duck under or jump over these guys and fire the batarang at them from the right. You don't need to jump down near this bouncer to destroy him. Grab your gun and kill him from the ledge. When you go to grab the bullets, jump quickly to miss these mines. The generators here in the underground conduit are dangerous to the touch, and it's difficult to avoid them. Don't be afraid to use a couple of bullets on the second robot. 
the bonus makes it worth losing the ammo. Jump to the left of these robots and take them out with bat punches. Like before, if you stay far away from this guy and let your bullets do the work, he won't jump down and pounce on you. The ladder that will carry you up to the next level is guarded very heavily. If you have the Dirk weapon, use its three-way power to destroy the missile launcher on the ceiling. But if you're low on ammo, you might just make a run for it. Follow the trail of green slime down this drop and hold left to land on the block. Be ready to punch this gunman between his shots. Go to the left and jump, even though you can't see a landing spot from where you are. If you're careful, you can land more safely than Batman did here. Once you reach this point, you're almost home free, but it's a long climb to the exit. When you're climbing these walls, try to jump to the middle of a section, because if your head hits the ledge, you may be in for a long drop. If you do fall, grab a wall quickly, take your time on the way up, and you're home free. Be very careful moving through stage 3-3. Take the time to destroy smaller enemies when you have to, but don't let them get you. You need to save your energy for these larger cannons. They sap a lot of energy, so move in close with the batter round. Watch how Batman makes his way up these walls. These grinding wheels will take a lot of energy away from you if you don't plan your jumps carefully. At the end of stage three, you'll take on Giga Voltman. This angry cybernoid shoots an electric beam from his arm that's hard to dodge. If your batarang is pretty well stopped, it's the weapon to choose. The floor in stage 4-2 is covered in energy zapping rotors. Use your expert wall climbing technique to keep you out of the heat. Here's another good place to stock up. The hearts and bonuses are great. But it's even more important to grab some ammunition while you can. There's a lot of shooting ahead. There's no way to get up to the exit in stage 4-3 unless you climb this wall. The power bolts in this area look random, but many have patterns. At the end of stage four, destroy the first half of the dual container alarm by standing on the middle platform and punching. If you crouch when the machine comes by, it will pass over without doing any damage. To destroy the second unit, move to the ledge on the left. When the machine is on the far right, hop down and blast it. Then return to your ledge. A few good shots should shut it down. Stage 5-1 offers more grinding cogs than before. Jump like this and you won't have to move in between jumps. Be ready for these little devices too. Saving your energy is really important here. You have to be careful to make it through this section alive. Take the time you need to set up each jump and be ready for every confrontation. This corridor is long, but don't get discouraged. Just break out your best wall climbing techniques. Now for your toughest challenge yet. Batman killed this fire dissolver's brother, so he'll try to take revenge with his fireballs. There's no easy way to beat him either. Don't bother dodging, just shoot quickly and try to outlast him. The Joker. Try your best to dodge his lightning while you stick close and punch or shoot. Justice is on your side, Batman. As Rue in Ninja Gaiden 2, 
You'll have to learn to use your ninja talents if you ever want to see the mysterious woman Irene again and recover the stolen statue. Since jumping is such an important part of your ninja training, learn to control where you land. Here you can put yourself right where you want to be. Position yourself here so that these enemies will jump around you instead of on top of you. Crouch down to stab them. If you don't like the looks of this creep, jump up on the wall and wait for him to charge. When he runs for the wall, jump down and slash him from behind. When he gets too close, jump back on the wall and do the same thing. You don't need a ticket for this train, but you'd better move slowly. Always be ready for enemies to come from behind. Keep the weapon you want. If you uncover a weapon you don't want, just avoid it. The fighting through here is pretty fierce. This red spear will restore your energy. You need to be ready for this bat, but if it does hit you, keep moving or it'll return. The snowdrifts in stage 2-2 let you know when and where the wind is blowing. Jump only when the snow falls straight down or in the direction you want to jump. On the ground, the wind can blow you forward, making these guys easier to kill. This is a tricky jump, so if you miss, climb to the top and let the wind blow you back up to the ledge. The wind will probably be against you when you land on this small ledge. Wait it out until it's safe to jump. You'll find a scroll behind one of these globes. They're crucial. If the enemies here ball up and roll around, get out of here quick. When you land, flip around to avoid these gunmen's shots. To get this red globe, wait until the wind is blowing to the left and the roaming enemy is out of the way. Then jump and stab at the sphere. This is a tricky opponent because he throws spiders that will crawl up the wall. When you're on the ground, move to avoid the spiders he throws. The best time to attack this troublesome enemy is right after he jumps from his perch. Make him jump by getting on the same level, then hop down and slash him. When traveling to the lower path here, use the fire shield to guard against attackers. A fire shield will come in handy here, too. Make sure you know where each ledge is when jumping through this area. After the bat passes by, take each jump one at a time. The lightning will expose every ledge. Some enemies are better avoided than killed. Jump over this guy, or he may knock you over the ledge. Here in stage 3-2, jump as soon as you reach the other side of this gap, or a shot will knock you off the edge. If an eagle hits you, keep moving forward so it will fly off. Also, throwing stars is a good choice in this area. Jump over or kill the enemy on the stairs. Otherwise, he'll shove you out of his way and into the pit. Sneak up on this flamethrower and take him by surprise. If you get hit, use your moment of invincibility to take care of business. Use your split images against this foot to trap him on the right column then drain his power. Be ready for the creature on the other side of this gap in stage 4-1. If it does hit you, grab for the side of the pit. 
If you have a fire shield in this area, you don't have to worry about the flames or the enemies. Just jump to each ledge and let your shield do the work. The water in stage 4-2 will speed you up or slow you down, like the wind did in the snow scene before. To make this jump, ride slowly down the side and wait for the enemy to jump into the pit. When you reach the middle of the gap, jump to safety. Keep jumping when you leave this ledge, or the water will carry you off the side. Crouch down and exterminate these kinds of creatures before they start moving, and without getting too close. You need to kill this guy before you can jump to the next block safely. This globe is worth the trip. The one up behind it will come in handy. Patience is your greatest weapon at the end of stage four. Jump to the left platform and hack away at the waterfall in the center. When the small creature comes out, drop to the ground instead of jumping. When it's clear, jump back up to the ledge to deliver more destruction. You can take care of these guys with no problem by using fire from this lower ledge in stage 5-1. If you're getting cold feet on the ice of stage 5-2, solve your slippery problem by jumping up to steady your footing. Also, your windmill throwing star can exterminate the spider. The one up behind the lower globe is well worth this tricky trip. Watch how Rue slides from ledge to ledge and waits until his enemy gets as far as possible before he attacks. A fire shield makes jumping from ledge to ledge a lot easier. Keep moving on these ledges because turning to fight an enemy will probably cost you your life around here. Ashtar appears randomly and only for a moment. The fire wheel works well against him, but when it's gone you have to get in close and slash. When he starts to appear, predict where he'll fire at you, then get between his shots. Be ready with your split images in the air, so you can do three times more damage to him. It takes a while to wear him down, but with triple the ninja power, you'll be sure to overtake him. Take it slowly behind these cavern walls in stage 6-1. It's hard to tell what's behind these areas. Don't miss the scroll behind this red ball. If a lot of enemies make it tough traveling through areas like this one, use your invincible fire ring to keep moving through the action. You'll waste some valuable life if you try to kill everything that guards this door. Make a break for it. Being sneaky will get you past these evil twins. Their jumping is pretty predictable, so attack from below when they're in the air. Your split body will help, particularly if you have throwing stars. There's a pretty difficult jump here. As soon as you jump, you have to worry about the man on the ledge, a bird that flies on, and someone chasing you. If you can, take them out in that order. There's a very helpful fire shield behind this red ball, if you can get to it. Get rid of these flames before trying to move on. In stage 7-2, wait for this creature's shots to pass, then jump and slash quickly. It's Jaquio. You have to keep running to avoid his powerful magic. Use throwing stars against him if you have them, and attack with your image instead of your real ninja. 
Stick to the center when you can. This demon of darkness is tough to beat. The windmill throwing star will help you destroy this skull. Throw it right at the mouth, then follow up with slashes if you have to. The only thing between you and victory is this hideous creature. Attack the head first, then destroy its glowing heart. Your other images will help. Wield the dragon sword like a true ninja. Game Players Sports for Kids. Packed with action photos, great games, and the latest stories in sports. It's the magazine written especially for kids like you. Every issue delivers the players, the action, all the sports, all year long. Read about what's rad hot across the country. Find out what kids just like you are doing in sports. Stay in tune with what's happening when and where. It's all in Game Players Sports for Kids. Get six bi-monthly issues for only $11.95 by calling toll-free. Order your subscription today. There are only a few hours left before terrorists will begin launching nuclear missiles from the fortress they now control. By finding and assembling the infamous heavy barrel weapons, you are the last hope of stopping the destruction. But there's help along the way. The red terrorists carry keys that will unlock lockers, where you'll find ammunition, weapons, and even pieces of heavy barrel. Pellet gun or the flamethrower is your best bet against this monster tank. Run straight up until you're past its cannon, then turn and blast it. Don't miss your first heavy barrel part here, too. When you're near the end of the bridge, start firing quickly to destroy the helicopter ahead. Then, when the coast is clear, dart over to this locker for another heavy barrel part. There's a star shield in this other locker which comes in handy against tanks. Watch how this tank is destroyed without a single shot from the pellet gun. The last enemy of Perimeter 1 is this super tank. If you have a star shield, use it while firing at the tank from the right side. After the tank is destroyed, you must blast through the steel door to move on to the next level. Keep an eye on your ammunition and enemies that may sneak up from behind. You're in for a tough ride on the two slow elevators in the second perimeter. When you come to the twin cannons, try to destroy at least one or you'll get caught in the crossfire. You can carry up to four keys at a time, so keep as many on hand as possible. You may want to check out this top lock, but there's an extra man in the lower one. When the tank comes on, take care of it first, then kill the men when the heat is off. After the last cannon on the second elevator, stand in the center of the screen and alternate shooting left and right. If you have the heavy barrel and it runs out here, any weapon will do. Don't waste too much ammo on this set of manipulator arms. Plant a few grenades near its center and this fever is history. As soon as you enter the third perimeter, there's an extra man in the locker on the left. After you've played the game several times, you'll remember which lockers are worth opening and which you should pass by. If you keep off the tracks as much as you can, you won't have to worry about being railroaded by the coal cars. There's plenty of gunfire here, so stay alert.
As you approach the end of Perimeter 3, try to get a head start on the armored anti-personnel vehicle by running just below and to the right of where it will appear. Three or four grenades should do the trick. This armored car will fill the fourth perimeter with spiders if you don't blow it to bits as soon as you see it. When you're climbing stairs, remember that enemies will try to sneak up from behind you. The star shield is a good weapon to have when you want to take care of enemies behind and beside you. But the best weapon to use against the helicopter is the flamethrower. Your main concern is dodging the bullets the helicopter shoots at you. Fire at the helicopter as much as you can, but this battle should be a defensive one. In Perimeter 5, you're back on elevators like the ones from Perimeter 2. The key is being alert. Near the end of the first ride, four terrorists will come out of nowhere. If you're not on the ball, their grenades might prove deadly. If you can assemble a heavy barrel before entering this area, it will come in handy. The tanks on this strip won't even have a chance to come on the screen if you have a heavy barrel. But with a regular weapon, there'll be a lot of trouble. If your heavy barrel runs out, this is a perfect place for a star sheet, although it won't take care of gunfire. Shoot the terrorists throwing grenades before their deadly weapons can get to you. This super tank is no match for you because it can't turn its cannon. Keep to the right of its fire and launch a few grenades. Six or eight should send you onto the next perimeter. Start perimeter six by landing a few grenades near your first enemy. This perimeter is called the abyss and the snipers here are thick. Keep your eyes open and scramble to dodge all the crossfire. If you get shot in heavy barrel, you become invincible for a short time. Use this to your advantage to take out all the enemies you can. On this elevator, it's crucial to shoot every enemy as he appears. If several get past you, they'll all rush the platform and you'll never make it out alive. Now the enemies will sneak up from the sides and the lower part of the screen. Move to the top of the elevator platform and shoot in the other direction. Like before, if too many terrorists get on the platform, you could be in big trouble. This deadly grabber is harder to destroy than the one before. You should still use grenades, but don't get in too close or the arms will squeeze the life out of you. You can throw grenades just to the side of the machine, and it will still do some damage. You can also try to predict where the machine will go next and throw some grenades for it to run into. You can see here that some enemies will disappear when you scroll them off the screen and then return. The fighting here is fierce, but if you can make it through, there's a pellet gun ahead. You want to use a fire gun or pellet gun against these commandos. Get out of the way when they kneel to shoot. Once you've taken care of them, you're on your way to the Launch Authority security area. Before you can seize control of the security area, you'll have to deactivate this huge destructor. If you can, use the heavy barrel and duck in the corners to escape the arms and missiles. Give it your all. The world is counting on you. If you like this game tape, you'll love Game Player's Pro Tip Hotline. Now you can hear the tips you want to know just by pushing a button on your telephone. Each week, our Game Player's experts choose the best hints and tips for three hot games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just dial and select which secrets you want to hear. Every week, we'll change the games and the hints. Try it today. $1.25 for the first minute, 75 cents each additional minute. Don't forget to ask your parents' permission before calling. Call 
In Dragon Warrior 2, take the time to talk to everyone in the towns and castles. These people will give you important hints and send you in the right direction. Throughout the game, there are portals which will transport you to different places. These portals will open up many opportunities if you explore them. You'll encounter many types of shops in different towns and castles. This one sells tools. Others sell armor and different supplies. Before setting out on an adventure, buy some medical herbs so that you can refill lost energy. Once you leave a castle or town, you'll have to face many perils while traveling. One of the more common enemies is the Big Slug. There are several enemies almost exactly like him. He's worth fighting if you want, because he'll usually do only one point of damage. After leaving the first town, head left to the second town, called Left Wing. It's not a long journey, but you might want to reach an experience level of two before entering. At the entrance to Left Wind, there is a tool shop that sells a new item, the Wing of Reverb. When you throw this item into the air, it will return you to the last place where you saved your game. This wing will be very useful as you go along, so buy it as soon as you can. Here in Left Wind, spend all the money you gained on your adventures in the armor and weapons shop. The copper sword and the chainmail armor are your best picks if you have the money. If one of your warriors loses all his hit points during a battle, visit the House of Healing to revive them. This is expensive, however, so it's best not to do this often. If the battles begin to take their toll on your party, get some rest at a nearby inn. All of your party's wounds will be healed, and any magic points that were used will be restored. Take five steps from left wing and head due north to reach a castle. The tool shop in Canuck Castle offers another new item. This fairy water is helpful because it repels enemy attacks during your travels. You may notice that the prices for items and services will vary from town to town. The farther away you are from your starting point, the more expensive things may be. This inn, for example, charges 24 gold pieces for a stay. These prisoners might have valuable information you might need, but how can you get a chance to speak with them? A prison key might help. There is a king here in Cannock Castle who will record your events here in the Imperial Scrolls of Honor. This allows you to save your game since it will take a long time to finish. When you leave Castle Canuck, travel to the right to reach the cave that is rumored to contain the Spring of Bravery. Along the way, you will have to fight off more powerful creatures, such as the Healer. This creature will cast a heal spell on himself whenever your attacks are successful. Hit him hard with your first attack so he won't have time to recover. Once you're inside the cave, you'll notice that shadows cover up parts of the cave that you're not near. Although this is more realistic, it's much harder to remember where the different paths are located. A rough map will make things a lot easier. Deep inside the caves, big cobras begin to threaten you. These slithery reptiles aren't hard to destroy, but their sharp fangs carry dangerous poison. It's a good idea to have antidote herbs before exploring any further. After a long journey through the cave, you will find the Spring of Bravery. The old man here will tell you something about a very important item. Southwest of the cave is a town where you can get a boat for a favor. Once you have a boat, you can explore all sorts of new lands. Sail southward and you will come to the Colosseum.
Fighting for this king's amusement may not sound very inviting, but if you fight and win, he will give you the moon crest. This is really worth fighting for. Prices sure are high here at the Colosseum. It looks like time to set aside a few hours to gain experience and money if you haven't done so already. This phony is about as reliable as an ogre. Don't listen to this fountain of misinformation. This little island is home to three portals of teleportation. The one on the far right takes you to a little man who challenges you to prove your identity with Erdic's token. Once you have the token, bring it here to obtain Erdic's helmet. Illy's Inferno's Magic is a low-level spell that works well in this situation because it affects multiple targets of the same race. The Infernos will take care of the magic using magic types, while the fighter types will hold off the hunters. These types of enemies are best avoided. These enemies are special because they can call others to come to their aid. Their friend, or friends, will have all the hit points, so it's like starting the whole battle all over again. Illy will learn the Heal More spell early in the game. This will be particularly useful because you can often prevent someone from dying, and you won't have to worry about carrying medicinal herbs. During your sea travels, you are bound to come across this little island. This island holds one town where there is something of tremendous value. This pooch has a nose for fine antiques. He'll show you where to find the golden key. These tips should start you well on your way through Dragon Warrior 2. When you need the best game news and playing strategies, pick up Game Players magazines. Game Player Strategy Guide to Nintendo Games gives you great hints and tips for all the hottest NES and Game Boy games. And Game Player's Magazine covers winning strategies for all kinds of new games, for every type of system. Have Game Player's Magazine or Game Player Strategy Guide to Nintendo Games delivered right to your door and save money too. Get 12 issues of either magazine for only $17.95. That's a savings of 50% off the newsstand price or save 58% by ordering 24 issues for $29.95. Operators are standing by, so call today. Game Players Magazine show you how to play to win. Call 1-800-222-9631.